meeting of community board five. <clears throat> we have some new members who have been appointed and get ready because you're going to be introducing yourselves in a couple of minutes. First of my name is Walter Sanchez. I'm the first vice chair. In the absence of Vincent R. Curie, our chair, I'll be running the meeting tonight. Can we all stand and face the flag? We'll do a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States for which it stands, one nation under God, justice for all. Thank you. Now we're going to go to the new members, and we ask you to stand up. We're going to bring a mi microphone over to you. Not yet, when I call your name. We'll bring a microphone over and tell us where you live. Tell us a little bit about you so we get to know you a little bit. Carol Benevic Bradley. Hi. Hey everyone, um, I'm Carol Benevic Bradley. I live in Ridgewood. Uh, I've been in the neighborhood for 11 years. New York, always. Uh, and I work in the tech, I work in the tech industry, in marketing. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Michael Bick. How's everyone doing? My name is Michael Bick. The private sector. You're going to have to do a little more than that. I work for a uh, holding company that does advertising agencies in the doing people management. Very nice, thank you. Maritza Carmona. Hi everyone, thank you. Uh, I, my name is Maritza Carmona. I grew up in uh, Maspeth, Ridgewood. I live in Glendale. I have spent uh, my life in this district. Uh, went to IS-93, PS-153, Grover Cleveland High School, uh, St. Stan's for Catholic School. I am, you know, the daughter of this district. I'm happy to finally serve uh, for a living. I do uh, uh, government affairs for nonprofits in New York City. Um, so yeah. I have a long history of attending community board meetings on behalf of the organizations that I represent. I'm thrilled to finally do it in my district and to volunteer for this community that I've uh, lived in and have uh, loved and uh, been in for, for long, forever. So, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Ethan Chen. Ethan. Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? I'm Ethan Chan. Uh, I've been a resident of Middle Village for about two years now, but I'm a native Queen's son, grew up in uh, Sunnyside, and have went to school all throughout my life in New York. Um, I am a former pharmacist turned product manager. So happy to meet you all. I'm not going to ask how you ended up at the same table. Like, we'll get to that later. Deepak Ch um, Chowdhury. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Deepak Chowdhury. I have been uh, living in this neighborhood uh, more than 15 years. Uh, I have been like part of like various uh, in the board of various nonprofit organizations. Uh, yeah, recently I have been working with Department of Health uh, with the Bureau of uh, Health and Mental Hygiene. Thank you. What neighborhood do you live? Uh, Ridgewood. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Salvatore Crofasi. That's you. Real estate. Real estate. Good evening, everybody. My name is Salvatore Crafasi. I was born in Ridgewood, lived in Middle Village, I think 20, 30 years or something, and I've been selling real estate in the neighborhood for next year, believe it or not, it'll be 50 years. Yikes. And uh, I know, I can't believe it. Anyway, it's, it's good to give back to the neighborhood. I'm also on the board of directors of the Queens Chamber, the Forest Park Trust. I'm president of the Middle Village uh, Property Owners and the Middle Village Chamber of Commerce. So I'm involved with the community, and I love this community, and I sell this community. 
Thank you. And Sal, you did great work with the uh, with the homeless shelter, with uh, really have, making us aware, the community aware of what was going on with the homeless shelter before it came in Glendale. Thank you for that. Daniel DeBrucker. Hi, I'm Dan DeBrucker. I live in Glendale. I've been in the area for about two years. I'm the uh, associate pastor for community engagement at Ridgewood Presbyterian Church, and I'm also a social worker. Thank you. Dori Figliola. I'm back. <laughs> I was on the board for, what, 16 or 17 years. I left to take care of my father, who has since passed, and um, I retired. I've been in Glendale for almost 70 years, born and raised here. I do the Glendale Community Garden, where we have Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Right now, I have somebody doing um, time for confirmation, so they get their credit. And I've been involved. I've been, I remained on committees the years that I wasn't on here, but I'm back. Thank you. Thanks for coming back. Lily Scarab Scarabino. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Lily Scarabino. Um, I've lived in Middle Village for over 40 years. Um, I actually was Gary's intern when I was in college. Sorry, yeah. Gary. <laughs> um, I currently do handle compliance and certification um, at the university, St. John's University. Welcome, thank you. Brendan Zwegerman. There you go. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Brendan Zwagerman. I've lived in Ridgewood on Forest Avenue for 13 years now. I've uh, been coming to these meetings and then uh, certainly watching them online as well in recent years uh, for a long time. Glad to finally be a part of the board and uh, hope to get back to my community and work, work with all of you. Um, I have an education in urban planning, currently working at a business improvement district in Manhattan. So uh, great to be here. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Now we're going to go into the public forum, and speakers are limited to two minutes. Um, the, we'd like no personal attacks, please. Right, Garrett? And we have first is Lewis Ross from a Glendale Accident. Lewis? There you go. Hello, how you doing? Uh, been in Glendale for over 20 something years, uh, bus driver retired. Uh, uh, lately, we've been having problems with the uh, railroad, Atlantic Railroad. Uh, he been, there's a bus driver, I mean, uh, there's a train driver there, but he blasted in the horn intentionally. It holds the horn for long periods of time. We've complained about the train crashing at 3, 4 in the morning. You tell them, this is residential, this is against the law, you can't do that. People want to sleep. So they quiet it down. But now we get the guy that blows the horn at 3, 4, 5 in the morning and holds the horn for a long period of time. People's dream home is becoming a nightmare. I got a, a neighbor that's uh, almost 90. I take her to the hospital to check her heart. It's, 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 it's an attack on Glendale. I would like you to hear what we hear. This is how we live. Wait to the last one. <laughs> Four, two in the morning, he sticks it to us all the time, every day. He gets paid, he takes the train and uses it as a weapon against the community, elderly, uh, he just blasts us while he's on the clock and getting paid by Atlantic Railroad. Why do they let this man terrorize the neighborhood? I feel for my neighbors. Elderly, they got their homes, and, and this is nothing. You should hear the really, really loud blast. On a good day, he'll rip all four 
he'll blast us. This is disgusting. It's it's a disgrace for this company to let this man still work in the in, in the community. It's a privilege for them to work in this community. It's un American what he's doing. It's disgusting. I speak out for the many that can't sleep, the elderly. I've had uh, people with Alzheimer's, and I took care of them. Once you blast them in the middle of the night, they can't get back to sleep. You can't sleep. It's disgusting what this man is doing. This company should be held accountable for what his employee is doing to Glendale. Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> Thomas Toscano. Mr. T. Carding. Good evening, everyone. This is my second community board uh, hearing. I was here two months ago. I couldn't make last right. month. Um, and I had raised the issue of, of trash along the tracks and the commercial parking. First on the trash, um, the day after the community board meeting, a bunch of people showed up and cleaned up all along the tracks. I'm assuming that somebody here had something to do with that, and I thank you. And as I said in the last meeting, I'm not just here to complain. My company's waste management. We'd be happy to help. We'd be happy to provide uh, service to remove the, the waste if that's ever done again. We're also having an event on Earth Day, the day before actually, the Friday, at 11 o'clock in the morning where we're going we're gonna to do it again. We're going to clean up. We did it last year. We're going to clean up all along the tracks there. So if anybody wants to join us, it's, it's right at uh, Edsel Avenue and 73rd Place and 73rd Street there, all along the tracks. We're going we're gonna to, again, clean up the neighborhood. Um, I just want to end with the um, commercial parking again along the tracks. I raised it last time. Um, I, I'd like to make a proposal, uh, and that is that along that, around that area there that we implement alternate side of the street parking, and I think it will resolve a lot of the issues in the neighborhood there. I know that it's a nuisance to people who live there and have to move their cars twice a week or whatever it is. Um, but there are people, because it doesn't have alternate side, there are cars that are left there for very long periods of time that uh, take up spots from the people who do live there. Um, again, I, I make it as a proposal, and I know I'm sure there's a process, as is everything with government, um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Um, we, do have, we do have alternate side of the street park. Hold on, Sal. Sal, good. Ask a question, like public. He asked where the garbage comes from. Where um, does the garbage come from? A lot of it comes from those cars that park along the tracks. You know, people are rude. They, 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 they go in their car and they clean the stuff out and they throw it out the window. Sometimes they throw it over. You know, I know the railroad gets a bad rap for the garbage along the tracks, but to be honest with you, it doesn't come from the trains. Mm. It comes from the cars in the front. They throw it over the fence. Right. Um, we actually, I called the railroad to ask them, we were going to clean up along the tracks, but for safety reasons, they don't want us to do that. I'm sending them pictures, and they said they're going to send the crew to clean up the stuff actually on the tracks. So that's where the So we could have our transportation committee look, look into that. It doesn't have to be twice a week. It could be once a week. There, there's precedents where you, can, you have to move your car once a week for, for cleaning. I think um, that would be great. Can you guys look into that? Is that something you know where he's talking about? That's a sanitation issue. Um, yeah, I'm talking about Edsel Avenue. Um, well, I mean, it, it's a short stretch. It's yeah, it starts at 73rd Place and it goes down to okay. like 68th ish, and then yeah, right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have the minutes from last meeting. Um, I'm looking for a motion to accept those minutes. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Any opposed? Any changes? Oh, okay. Jasmine. Oh, Jasmine. All right. We're going to have uh, the alcoholic beverage report. So, who's going to read that? Kathy, are you? You? Who's going to read the liquor licenses? Who's going to say? I will read them. The Liquor License Committee did not meet this month. Right. But I'm going to read off the liquor licenses. Yeah. All right, so these liquor licenses, are these are for new liquor licenses. And if you have challenges or concerns, just raise your hand and speak after, after uh, I announce where they are. La Esquinta, Latin Food Cuisine Corp, 6102 Myrtle Avenue, Glendale, New York 11385. We have El Fan Brajan Corp, 
Doing business as TBD, 465 Seneca Avenue, Ridgewood. Anything there? No. Liquor license renewals while in Kathmandu, Inc., 758 Seneca Avenue, Ridgewood. Next one is uh, Fresh, Pond Road, Fresh Pond Cocktail Club, LLC, 6418 Fresh Pond Road, Ridgewood. Then for new wine, beer, and cider, Topos Two Books, LLC, doing business as Topos, Topos Bookstore Two, T-O-O, 5922 Myrtle Avenue, Ridgewood. Sark, Sarke Food Group, doing business as Gunther's, 487 Seneca Avenue, Ridgewood. Okay, GW Ridgewood, LLC, Gyro, Gyro World, that's for wine, beer, and cider renewals, Gyro World, 6657 Fresh Pond Road, Ridgewood. Wine, beer, and cider renewal, Little Havana Cigar Company. That's Havana Dream Cigar Company, 6310 Woodhaven Boulevard, Rigo Park. That's the end of our district. Other notifications. Hail Mary, 7778, LLC, doing business as the Flying Fox Tavern. 678 Woodward Avenue. What is that, Gary? It just says other, it just says other notifications. Well, they want to use the backyard. Okay. Alteration, seeking to open a backyard area and remove no backyard operations from their stipulation. So they have a stipulation, no backyard. So when do we have to give uh, any uh, notice back to the Liquor Authority? Um, well, I'm looking to hear from the neighbors. I have emailed them, so I'm looking to speak to them as far as uh, whether or not they are willing to accept that. Okay. So we're not, what's that? I just, how do we email the neighbors? Oh, because I met with them. So the question is, how do we me email the neighbors? Gary, you've met with them. Okay. Okay. So what's the process for notifying the, the SLA? Um, our liquor license committee is going to meet. We're recommending that they meet on the first Tuesday of the month by Zoom. Six or six o'clock or so, if there are any concerns, to have a standard meeting at six o'clock on Tuesday evenings, the first Tuesday of the month, to talk about these things. Because we really would rather have recommendations coming from a committee to this board so that we could really notify the SLA if there are any, any challenges. Is that okay? Is that all right with, uh, with you guys? Then we don't have any. Then, then they, they get on and they get off or they email each other and say, we're not going to meet this month. But as you see here, there's alter, you know, two or three concerns that we have here. Cypress C Cafe, LLC, 70, 1702 Stanhope Street. And what they want to do is a class change, looking to go to a license of liquor, wine, beer, and cider from their current wine, beer, and cider. So they want to do liquor. So that's what we're looking to do. Any, 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 anybody on the committee right now have a problem with that? Because right, it's, it's kind of been up in the air when they get reports. People on the liquor license committee now, they really didn't get an email well, until they today. Can explain how they came to get the liquor license committee together? Well, well they were, most of you were here. We um, agreed to have a liquor license committee to look at these liquor licenses, instead of just bringing them up here and then we vote, we really don't know what's going on. So we'd like to have a committee because there's a proliferation of liquor license requests all over the all over the um, uh, all over the district, and so we adopted that we'd have a committee. Uh, right now, Marianne Latanzio is well, is the chair. And the composition of the committee is made up of representatives from Ridgewood. One person from each community. Well, there's more, we've put more on from Ridgewood because that seems to be the large portion of the liquor license, okay. the new liquor license. Like, there's only one person on from Glendale. I mean, we don't get that many new liquor licenses. So we were really concerned about the Ridgewood group because there were so many 
I mean, this whole sheet is is Ridgewood except for the first one. So, so we're going to ask the new the, the new members if any of you want to be on that committee, and it's really like taking a look and understanding your neighbors. If you live in Ridgewood, your neighbors might complain about some of these places. The places they're asking to start to use the backyard. I mean, that's a tough thing, you know, for our, our recommendation. We don't make a final decision. The SLA is going to, but if we say, you know, we don't have an objection to it. Neighbors might come down here and say, you guys didn't have an objection to this? So we really want to take a look at that. We want the committee to take a look at it. So if you're on that committee, uh, we'd like you to be ready on the first Tuesday of the month. We'll, we're going to send you, as soon as we get um, a request for a, a liquor, and you see there are 10 of them every month, they're going to send them to you. So just pay attention to that and be ready the first Tuesday of the month so that the committee can talk about it. If you're not going to have a meeting, the chair will let you know. Yes. You guys can you guys can decide, but there was no decision. There was no meeting. So we at the executive committee had to talk about it. You have to have some time while you're doing it. We find if it's standard, you, you end up meeting. You know, when you make that time. So we don't really care when you do it. You just you know it's got to be before this board meeting, and you have to talk about it because time is sensitive. You have to be fair to them. They apply for a license. They need to hear back within 30 days from us, and then it goes to the state liquor authority. Is that clear? Yes. Kathy just mentioned that they're all in Ridgewood except for the first one. So that made me look at the address, 6102 Myrtle Avenue. I believe it's Ridgewood. It is probably barely correct now. That's right. the one on the corner of 61st. Right. I'm so wondering why they have to lead them. Because I think probably their legal address. East of the railroad tracks, you're in Glendale. Yeah, right. So you are just in Glendale. So are they likely to have a problem, have this rejected because they have the wrong location? They probably, they probably wrote Ridgewood on there. They don't really reject it for those kind of, kind of reasons. They're probably just corrected. The SLA will probably just correct it. So just to let you know, the SLA is probably going to say yes unless something is brought up. That's all. Go. Uh, gyro world. Yes. Gyro world. PETA is closed, I've just been informed, not yes. Gyro World. Yes, Gyro World is Greek, PETA was Turkish. Okay, so that's why we have to have a committee, so we don't do this back and forth here. The committee should really get down to it. So you new members, if you're interested in being on that committee, no, 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 let us know, yes. Yeah, just, okay. we're in agreement right, that the committee did not receive right. anything, right? Right. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because we're all sitting here right. looking not at each other yeah. I think yeah, a day ago or two days ago. They're saying it's Ridgewood. Walter, still got the mic on. Uh, so yeah, we, we have to really button that up and you guys have to know uh, what's going on. So with these, you let us know next month and that's why we're saying the first Tuesday of the month, if nobody, if the chair or nobody's making a decision, um, let's, let's get it for the first Tuesday of the month. And the office will set up the Zoom, you know, and we'll, they'll get on. Everything all right with that? Yeah. You guys cool? Uh, we have demolition notices. I have them. Okay, there you go. So, in Maspeth, we have 5937-56 Road, building and garages, lot 2689, block 2689, lot 61, 5937-60th Road, detached garage, block 2729, and lot 5. No other demolition for it. Okay. That's it for that. We're going to have elected officials come up. I see Assemblywoman Jennifer Rajkumar. Got two minutes. Go for it. Thank you. It's good to see you, Walter. Uh, before I begin, I wanted to request if we might take a moment of silence for Louis Leschitz, if that's okay. He's sure. a friend of mine, a friend of our neighborhood, a fixture of Glendale. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I remember him always wearing a red coat when he came to my events, which he did for me. And he always had a very lively, cheerful spirit. Uh, when I was a new assemblywoman, he was always very supportive, and I'll never forget that. He served our country honorably as a veteran. Um, just yesterday, I was at Zum Stamish with him and Vinnie Arcuri, and I owed him a call back. But before I could call him back, I learned of his sudden passing. Um, and I know a lot of you have known him a lot longer than I have, uh, but thank you for allowing a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you. So, it was Women's History Month last month, and I'm proud to say that it was a tremendous success. It was a lively, we had dancing, we had a singer, and I honored five women from the CB5 area. And they are Teresa Donahue, Carrie Hansen, Elizabeth De La Cruz, Connie Altamirano, and Kathy Morowski. And I know we all know who they are. They deserve this honor. Uh, Mayor Eric Adams showed up as a surprise uh, to honor the women. And he said, you are not just the great women of this district. You are the great women of New York City. And they deserve nothing less than a mayoral visit. So it was tremendous. Um, I am also partnering with our district attorney, Melinda Katz, this month. Um, on April 20th, we are holding a webinar on preventing scams. There's so much fraud right now. Credit card scams, romance scams, identity theft. It's endless, and these fraudsters are getting smarter and smarter. You do not have to be a victim. So learn how to protect yourself by coming to the webinar I have with the DA. April 30th, Senator Adabo and I are bringing back our beloved recycling event in Forest Park. We will be there rain or shine. So I look forward to seeing you all again. Budget. Right now in Albany, we are working on the state budget. The budget is late. Why is the budget late? Because the leaders can't agree on public safety, specifically on bail reform. I support, as you all know, bringing back a common sense approach to public safety. We need to stop the approximately 2,000 repeat offenders in our city that are committing most of the crimes. And we need to grant our judges the power to judge. We need them to have discretion. I'm hopeful that we're gonna come down on the right side of this issue and get the budget done. Um, I've been working to combat the illegal and unlicensed smoke shops, and I was proud to welcome Sheriff Anthony Miranda yesterday to our district. I'm partnering with him to crack down on these illegal unlicensed smoke shops that are also cropping up near schools. Um, while the budget has been delayed, I've had some time to introduce new bills focusing on the future. Specifically, innovation. Who here knows about 3D printing? This is a well-informed crowd. Well, 3D printing has the power to build houses. It can build a house in the matter of a few hours. This is the future. You heard it here first. This is the future of affordable housing in our city. So I'm introducing a bill to study that. Also on innovation, AI, artificial intelligence, is transforming technology at every level. So I'm creating a bill to create a state office of innovation, and algorithmic accountability. Yes, it's true, the robots are coming, but I think um, it will benefit us all if we're prepared. Finally, back to the budget. I've been advocating for practical reforms. The child tax credit and the earned income tax credit are proven um, initiatives to lift people out of poverty. So I'm hopeful that this and other pragmatic solutions I get included in the final budget. I'm pushing for that, as well as funding uh, to continue to flow into our neighborhoods. Uh, so with that, you know where to find me. I love you all, and I want to thank you for everything you do. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. And from the Queens DA's office, Kate uh, Belmore. Belmay. Just introduce yourself, and you gave out flyers earlier. Yes, I was going to talk about our scams and frauds program, but Assemblywoman Raj Kumar did such a great job, I'll just say, I hope you can all make it. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the district attorney held a joint news conference with NYPD Commissioner Keechan Sewell, 
on what is possibly the biggest gang takedown in Queens history. A grand jury indicted 33 reputed gang members on gun charges and more, with five individuals being charged with two separate murders. A nearly three-year-long investigation into more than 22 shootings in and around the Baisley Park houses led to this 151-count indictment. At the center of this gun violence are three gangs, Money World and their rivals, local trap stars, and never forget loyalty. The defendants are variously charged with conspiracy, criminal possession of a weapon, criminal use of a firearm, and more. Five alleged gang members face murder charges in connection with the killing of two people. A 14-year-old basketball player was gunned down in 2019, and a 26-year-old man shot and killed as he sat in a double park car on New Year's Eve in 2020. The DA stressed that law enforcement is doing absolutely everything possible to get illegal firearms off our streets. Far too many innocent victims are being injured, and some are killed walking in their own neighborhoods where they should feel safe and secure. The DA's office will not let lawlessness and fear take over our neighborhoods by senseless gang violence. As always, my name is Kate Baim. I'm available if um, you need to contact the district attorney's office for anything, and I have some newsletters if anybody would like to take one. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Melissa, representing Juan Ardila. Hi, my name is Melissa, and I'm the constituent liaison for assembly member Juan Ardilla um, at the office here in Sunnyside. Uh, thank you for having me. I would like to share a few updates in our office in Albany. As you all know, and Assemblywoman Rajkumar said, our budget's late. <laughs> um, but during this legislation session, the assembly member has been able to introduce 11 bills. Three of them have passed the assembly, and two of those have been signed into law. One of the bills signed into law makes it easy to synchronize multiple medical prescriptions, and the other clarifies provisions related to the state-level program of all-inclusive care for the elderly. Uh, we are waiting for the third bill uh, to be signed into law. This third bill provides employers and business owners with the opportunity to register for emergency alerts from New York's public safety alert mass notification systems. We have also co-sponsored over 110 bills. In regards to the New York State budget, it is still being negotiated, as we said. And um, if you have any questions regarding that, I'm not the point of contact, but our legislative director is, and I could provide you his information. Um, in our district, our office has collected over 2,000 articles of clothing donated by community members here in Ridgewood. Uh, Topo Star was one of them, and also our Ridgewood YMCA sponsored our um, event. Um, so please stay tuned while we announce uh, an immigrant resource fair that will be head held in the near future in Ridgewood. So please, let's, please let us know if you would like to volunteer. Um, our office has also held various pop-up office hours in various parts of the district, including uh, Ridgewood Library, and we will be announcing more in the near future. In addition to this, we have in the works a community cleanup in Maspeth later this month. We will be forwarding details to CB5 as soon as we finalize all the details. Um, we have many plans in the work, both in Albany and in the district, but please let us know if you have any questions. I'm available in this table right here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Representing uh, Assemblyman Andrew Hevesy, Kevin. Uh, good evening, everyone. As mentioned, my name is Kevin Wisniewski with Assemblyman Andrew Hevesy's office. Um, first of all, on behalf of the Assemblyman, I just want to wish a happy Easter, happy Passover, and Ramadan Mubarak uh, to everyone observing. Um, and additionally, we hope everybody and their loved ones are remaining safe and well. Um, one main announcement locally tonight, and that is that we have finalized our dates for this year's spring cleanup series. Um, I brought some flyers with uh, all of the dates on them. Uh, our first will be taking place two weekends from now. Uh, that's Saturday, April 29th in Forest Hills, uh, with our second taking place the following weekend on Cooper Avenue in Glendale. Um, again, we have some information over here, and if there are suggestions for additional locations where um, our ears are always open. 
Um, last year, just to give you guys a little summary, we had 100 volunteers show up and more than 30 students claim volunteer service hours. Um, so that, that includes National Honor Society, local scout troops have done merit badges, and every letter, every, every student gets a letter of commendation from the assemblyman. Uh, so it's a great chance to volunteer and just meet some nice, uh, like-minded, civically engaged people. Um, as my colleagues or our colleagues have mentioned, the assemblyman is still up in Albany working on budget negotiations. Um, and he recently passed a bill um, that would study the amount of kids uh, in foster care who have intellectual disabilities um, to make sure that we can um, refer them to appropriate supports and services. Uh, so we're just hoping that Governor Hochul will sign that as soon as possible. Um, and as always, we remain readily available for anyone that needs any type of assistance. Uh, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Representing, representing Assemblyman Stephen Raga, Jolly. Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Jolly Patel. Um, I'm the Director of Community Relations from Office of Assembly Member Stephen Raga. Oh, thank you. Um, I just have a few, a few legislative updates and then community updates. Um, for the legislative update, um, the legis Assembly Member is introducing a resolution, resolution to commemorate the Sankran, or it's the Thai New Year for our Thai American community in District 30. Uh, for community updates, we'll be hosting an upcoming paper shredding event on May 11th from 11 to 1 p.m. at the Big Six in partnership with AARP New York. Um, our rain barrel giveaway is scheduled for some time in May. We'll be announcing a method to RSVP for those who are interested. Also for upcoming housing legal, clin legal clinics in uh, partnership with Communities Resist. Um, one in April and there will be one in May. Both will be held at our district office. Finally, if you have any other um, items or issues that you're facing and you are in District 30, don't, don't feel free to reach out at uh, our office. It's open between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 5519 69th Street, Masspath, New York. And our phone number is 718-651-3185. And I'll be here the rest of the evening if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Representing State Senator Mike Janaris, Irene, Irina. Good afternoon, how are you? Um, glad to be back, second time. Um, okay, so the senator, uh, as everybody knows, is up in Albany, as you hear, which hopefully will pass the budget and everything. Um, and also the last day for the children for school, April 14th is an annual Earth Day poster contest. Um, please have all the kids submit it online and passports. We work close with U.S. Senator Gillibrand's office. Passports is a big problem this year because everything is delayed. Make sure you renew your passports a year ahead before it expires because um, if you haven't already submitted it, unless it's an emergency to go to get anywhere, you're not going to be able to renew it on time. Um, I also got a, I went to a meeting, and I think it was a Liberty Park homeowners mm -hmm. or this meeting that someone complained about a fire hydrant that was knocked down during the February break at 7520, 64th place. I put it through with the DP. The DP has been way uh, has been going there to install a new one. They cannot install a new one. They need a contact person so they can ins get the car that's parked there to be removed and install the new fire hydrant. Um, I'm assuming it's masked with 64th place. Um, so anybody knows? Yeah. Um, if anybody knows. You know, no one has contacted me from Liberty Park homeowners. So um, I put it through DEP and they're looking to put in the fire hydrant. Um, anything else? Our office is on Newtown Avenue for now. Number still the same, 718-728-0960. And feel free to contact Great. us. Thank you. <laughs> Representing Senator Joe Adabo, John. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I guess first of all, congratulations to all the new board members. Um, I'm just going to announce a few um, events because the senator presumably is on his way. 
and he can get into uh, more details. Um, a lot of paper shredding going on. So um, actually this Saturday, the 15th, at Atlas Park from 10 to 1. Then again, later in the month on the 30th, we're co-hosting with uh, Assemblywoman Rajkumar. That's the Forest Park Band Shell from 10 to 2. Uh, a blood drive on Saturday, April 29th, again, 9 to 3 at Atlas, oops, excuse me, yes, Atlas Park. And then jumping a little bit ahead, uh, another big event, uh, Sunday, May 7th, Forest Park Band Shell, 10 to 2, e-waste recycling, and along with all kinds of donations. So good time to clean out the garage, you know, get rid of stuff. All right. Okay, and hopefully the senator will come to discuss other things. Good evening and have Thank a good you. evening. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, representing uh, uh, Congressperson Nydia Velasquez. Jonathan, where are you? There you go. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? It's good to see new faces here on the board and everybody being actively, civically engaged. I know the Congresswoman's very, um, a big advocate for people being civically engaged and a big supporter of the community boards. And she would like to wish all you guys a happy Easter, Ramadan, and Passover for everyone who celebrates. Uh, last month, the Congresswoman held a press conference uh, in Bushwick at the site of a e-bike explosion. You know, we've been seeing all these e-bike explosions throughout the city. Just this week, on Monday, there was an e-bike explosion in Astoria that killed two people. So this, is, this has been a big issue that we're seeing all throughout the city. So the purpose of this press conference was to announce her new piece of legislation that she dropped on the floor of the House uh, that will create grants for local governments and municipalities to create uh, public accessible and safe charging uh, stations for all mobility devices. Um, this is her, in her effort to combat the, this ongoing crisis that we're seeing all throughout the city. Um, also, our office has been receiving a lot of calls regarding the ADHD medication shortage. Um, there's a shortage of ADHD medication like Consortia and Adderall, mainly because of the accessibility of telehealth uh, throughout the pandemic. So more people are being diagnosed with ADHD, causing more of a demand. Uh, so the Congresswoman and other members of Congress uh, wrote a letter to the DEA asking them what are their agency's plans to alleviate this nationwide shortage. Yesterday, the Congresswoman joined the Secretary of Energy uh, in a tour of the Ravenswood Generation Energy Station out in Long Island City. Uh, this station actually provides 20% of the city's energy, so it's very important. And it's being uh, transformed into a clean energy hub with the recent initiatives by the Biden administration um, and their emphasis on renewable energy. So with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, and other bills, um, the Department of Energy actually estimates that the, that the, country's, that the country will achieve a 40% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. Um, so the tour also continued at the Greenpoint Library out in Brooklyn, where the Congresswoman and the Secretary witnessed how the library was being powered with um, energy, solar energy panels. And this is something that Congresswoman has been an advocate for, green energy, renewables. So yeah, that's all I have for now. I would like to thank you all for your time and allowing me to update you on the, what the Congresswoman has been doing. I have flyers, brochures um, by me if you, if you want. We have our office location, our office number, and my email if you'd like it as well. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, representing Grace Meng, Tiana. Tiana. Good evening, everyone. This week in Congress, Representative Meng returned to D.C. to continue her work on the Appropriations Committee, where she met with the Inspector Generals of the U.S. Department of Commerce and the U.S. Department of Justice and the Secretary of the State Department to review the budget requests from these departments on behalf of the Biden administration. Representative Meng is aware of the long process times and passport-related issues constituents are facing. In her hearing with the Secretary of the State Department, Anthony Blickman, a representative Meng pressed for answers regarding long processing times for passports and what the State Department's plans are for fixing this. Um, in terms of passports, we are having a uh, 
passport event at the Forest Hills Post Office. It's on a Sunday. They are opening up on a Sunday for anyone to come out and um, apply for a passport because uh, passport appointments are booked up for the next couple of months. Um, that is on Sunday, April 23rd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's on a first come, first uh, serve basis. Um, Representative Meng introduced a new deal for New Americans Act this week. The bill would establish new programs to assist refugees and immigrants that are already here legally to overcome common issues in their journeys to become American citizens. These challenges include things like language barriers, workforce training, and helping to break down obstacles to naturalization. The measure would also strengthen coordination between the federal, state, and local governments to support the social, economic, and civic integration of immigrants and refugees. Some of these programs include uh, the English as a Gateway to Integration program to teach English and prepare individuals for the naturalization test or to earn a GED, workforce development grant programs to ensure equitable access to education and workforce, and lastly, the Legal Services um, Immigration Assistance Grant program to provide support to nonprofit organizations who assist immigrants in their journeys to becoming new Americans. That is all. Thank, Thank you. you. Charlie, representing Councilmember Holden. Hi, good evening, everybody. Councilman Holden would like to thank you all for volunteering and giving back to the community. We have a few upcoming events in our area we'd like to bring to your attention. A thyroid scan on Thursday, April 20th, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at PS49. Electronic waste recycling at Massmouth Federal Savings Bank on Saturday, April 22nd, from 12 to 4 p.m. Veterans Benefit Information Seminar on Wednesday, April 26th, two sessions, one from 10 to 12, and the other from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Regular Veterans Care Center at our office on Wednesday, April 19th, Wednesday, May 3rd, Wednesday, May 17th, from 9, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Helmet Fitting and Distribution event on Saturday, May 13th, from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Frankfurt Principate Park in Maspeth. Atlas Mall Blood Drive on Saturday, April 29th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Our office is uh, well aware of the mail theft that's been going on, and we're working with our federal partners to get the post office to crack down on this. The post, the postal police got to get off the dime and do something about this. We all know what it's happening. We all know how it's happening, and we can't see why they can't get some law enforcement on this and fix it. Uh, we'll be giving away rain barrels again, a very popular thing for some reason. <laughs> so please call our office at 718 366-3900 to find out any details when that's going to be scheduled. Finally, uh, the council is working on the budget process, and uh, Bob is uh, chair of the uh, Veterans Committee, and he's working on increasing funding for the New York City Department of Veterans Services and working on creating a fund for a veterans service organization like halls, legions, and posts to be able to do repairs on their buildings. I want to thank everybody for your attention and participation in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Representing Council Member uh, Jennifer Gutierrez, Jan, Juan, Juan. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Juan Mayancela. I am the community organizer for Council Member Jennifer Gutierrez. Um, just a quick update from our end. Um, we're hosting mobile office hours at the Greater Ridgewood Youth Center on April 18th, this Tuesday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. It will be for um, anyone that, want, that wants to stop by. We're also doing it alongside with the Queen's Chambers. So if any small business wants to stop by, they could as well. Um, our office is uh, requesting a multi-agency walkthrough at the abandoned building on Woodward and Linden Street. Uh, we are waiting to confirm the date, but we've invited uh, Department of Buildings, Department of Sanitation, Department of Health, and Department of Transportation to take a look at what's happening in this um, intersection. Um, our office is also checking on tenants. We've did, did identified some buildings in our district that are um, that have a bad landlord, a, ba a bad uh, LLC. So we are checking on them with the violations that we are finding. Um, on April 26th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we'll be hosting Make the Road in our office at 244 Union Avenue, and they will be giving out information for NYC Care. 
Um, we part of our trash force. We're also doing community cleanups in Ridgewood, Bushwick, and Williamsburg. Uh, once I have the dates and the locations confirmed, I will send it to the board. And I'm happy to announce that District 34 had the highest amount of votes for participatory budget this cycle for the 12th cycle. We yeah we were able to get 6,527 votes. And Nadi's just inviting everybody to our yoga sessions that will be held at Grover Cleveland starting April 29th. It is for three weeks from Saturdays on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 11. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it from our elected uh, representatives. Thank you for keeping it tight. I mean, we did that in about 25 minutes, uh, and we had 11 people speaking. For you new members, one of the important reasons you're on this board is because you represent your block and your town, and the elected representatives are here. So we're kind of cool and relaxed here at this meeting. If you want to get up and speak to them, now's, now's the time to do it. You could do it during this meeting at any time. And it's, a, it's just a great place to have a conversation. As you see, Dimitro's in the back there. And that's, that's great. And that's why you're on this community board. It's one of the big reasons you're on this community board. So we encourage that as well. And sometimes they leave, so don't worry about getting up during the meeting. And uh, really, the vast majority of them who represent our district were here tonight. So thank you all, thanks for coming. Next part of the agenda is the district manager's report, and it's Gary Giordano. I, won't, I will not take too much time, but uh, next month there are nominations for executive committee positions. And of course, uh, our chairman, Vinnie Arcuri, who's been chairman for quite some time, has been ill, and I don't know about his ability to continue to serve. I hear he's way better. Um, I've seen him. He seems way better. Uh, he's getting a lot less fluid taking out of him. So God willing, he's going to get stronger and stronger. But I miss Vinny. Um, he used to come into the office several times a week and would be as helpful as he possibly could to us. And he's also real good uh, at knowing about construction and reading sets of plans and being able to advise us as far as all of that goes. Sanitation department seems like the one agency of the city of New York um, that has an increase in services. So dump outs or drop off locations are getting cleaned up quicker than I've ever seen them getting cleaned up. Of course, people continue to dump and people continue to throw their bags of garbage. Um, Near our office, where the freight rail is, we have a big problem with that. 60th Lane, Auto Road, but sanitation is doing a lot of cleanups, um, and we have a real good uh, new sanitation super named Matt Barry. Um, seems like a young guy. Uh, the last super we had, uh, Bill Miley got promoted and went to Brooklyn South. I hope that's good for him, but uh, we've always worked real closely with sanitation. As far as liquor license issues goes, I welcome a committee because the committee used to be Mr. Arcuri and I, essentially. <clears throat> and it wound up that I had to stay, I, well, I don't think things are gonna change, but I'm the one who has to stand up to the worst offenders of the alcoholic beverage law. And now we have a situation at 465 Woodward Avenue where they want a license and uh, I'm in discussions with the precinct about some of the antics that have been done there and at another location, apparently by the same people. So uh, uh, we may be writing very shortly to the SLA with regard to that application at 465 Woodward. Uh, the one at 678, um, I'm sorry, 465 Seneca, the one at 678 Woodward, basically that's a backyard issue and uh, we had them sign a stipulation agreement. We tried to get uh, new uh, businesses that are looking to sell alcohol uh, for on-premises consumption to enter into a stipulation agreement. And one of the stipulations is that we want them to close by 2 p.m. four nights a week so as not to put so much pressure on the precinct. So usually they'll say, we want to stay open uh, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night till 4 o'clock the next morning. Oh, putting your garbage out. So I got beat by that today because you're supposed to put 
your garbage out if you put it in a plastic bag after 8 p.m. Well, normally I'm working till around then, but tonight I had to come over here, so the garbage isn't getting put out tonight. Hopefully I'll get there Sunday. But please put your garbage out after 8 p.m., unless you're putting it in a sealed container. And then, like Lee Rottenberg pointed out, if you don't want to use your garbage pail, uh, your garbage uh, pail lid, maybe you should uh, affix your lid to your pail one way or another. Um, but we do have a big rodent problem in the city of New York. And of course, the health department, in my discussions with them, kind of denies that the rats are coming from the sewer system. And I'm sort of like, where else are they coming from? But they apparently don't want to bait the sewers, I guess because of the bait would go to the sewage treatment plant and eventually, you know, some of it into the East River. So, all right, so be prepared. Next month, we're going to have nominations for executive committee positions. And what I think I'm going to have, what I should do for the new board members, which I did last year, when people are nominated in May, to give a, a bit of a bio for each of the people that were nominated. Because you, new board members are going to be expected to vote for chairperson, first vice chair, second vice chair, treasurer, secretary, and four at-large members. In recent years, we have not had very contentious elections, but you never know. And Peggy O'Kane and some of those wonderful people sitting at that table over there are working on revisions to our bylaws to get them up to date. And, <laughs> and they had a meeting uh, before this meeting um, at 6.45 tonight, and hopefully they're closer. So. Congratulations to the new board members. I think you're joining an excellent community board. Um, we need good, um, <coughs> dedicated young people on the board. A lot of the people who have served for a lot of years, in, in many cases, decades. Paul Kersner has been a board member for 50 years, since he's 22 years old. Um, and Ted Renz, I, I know I, I was once a member of Board 5 for about eight and a half years before they asked me to take the job. And Ted, I think, is since 78, Ted? 79, excuse me. I don't want to make you older, you know. So, but because of term limits, which I'm totally opposed to, but they exist for board members, you know, a lot of them are going to not get reappointed come another six or eight years. So we need you young people to step up and um, take a leadership role, especially with committees. We have committees that are dormant and need leadership. And one of them right away is uh, environmental, and another one is housing. So two important issues that we need to deal with, uh, or we need leadership uh, for, for those committees. So I thank you, and I welcome you, and I think you're joining a real good community board. I think we have a very good reputation in Queens County and other places, and a lot of people in this room and staff have worked very, very hard to stabilize and improve these communities for decades. So welcome and thank you. Thanks, Gary. And, and to that end, we'd like the new members, uh, there are 10 of you here, just to stay after the meeting for about five minutes. We want to talk to you about committee, you know, what committees you think you'd like to be on because uh, we'd like to give you that. I mean, we want to try to keep you engaged. And committee work is really the, the nuts and bolts of, of being on the community boards when you get to meet people in a different way. So thank you for that. If you can stay for a few minutes after, after the meeting. We have some press here. Elijah Hamilton for the Time, Times News Weekly. We know other press is watching on uh, YouTube. And I want to bring up... He came in just now, and, and uh, Senator Joseph Adabo, come on up and just you know say a couple of words. Thank you for being here. Good evening. Hello, everybody. 
Uh, first, uh, to the new members on uh, CB5, uh, welcome and congratulations, and to all members of CB5, thank you. As a former member of Community Board, Community Board 10, down at Ozone Park, I know what it's like to be here each and every month and hear our selected officials prolong the night, so uh, I know what it's like, so I want to say thank you. To each and every of the members of CB5, thank you very much. Thank you, Walter, allow me to speak. Um, just a couple of things. I know my good colleague, uh, Jennifer Rashkumar, was here earlier, uh, and I know she spoke about the budget, but you know, my opinion about it, it's okay if a budget is late. If a budget is late because of a good reason, it's not about hitting a budget on the date of April 1st. And that's a horrible day anyway, because like it's April Fool's Day, and everybody you know, thinks we don't do work up in Albany anyway. But the idea here is, you know, it's not about hitting a date of April 1st. It's about getting it right. When you have a $270 billion budget and you want to get it right for the people of your community, your district, and the state, then the idea is it's okay if it's a little late to get it right. And if it's late because of public safety, if it's late because of an issue that we've actually changed bail twice before, but if it's, it's the number one issue why people complain to our office, then it's okay. Let's get it right. And the governor did make a statement that she wants to deal with this bail issue one last time. We're not doing this again and again and again. This, she wants to get it right. So it's okay if it's a little late because we're dealing with uh, uh, public safety. So whether it be judge's discretion, discovery, uh, the working with the district attorneys, whatever it may be regarding it, and I'm confident something will happen in a positive way regarding a bail change. I'm confident of that. Um, so we'll see what happens. But if it's late because of that, that's okay. And then we have the other issues, housing and transportation and education and health and everything else. But we'll, we'll get to it. And if anybody has any questions about it, just give my office a call, let me know, and, uh, of course. Um, there are other bills, though. There are other bills that go on because you know our constituents complain to us. And so there are three bills that I just co-sponsored in, in the state Senate. Um, but this is what we talk about up in Albany. The first bill says that it's the repeat offender issue. So why is my uh, you know, soap and my toothpaste and my toothbrush locked up behind glass in Walgreens and Rite Aid's and CVS? So this bill says, a proposal will say that if you're caught stealing this kind of product, or there's small products in these kind of stores, if you're caught twice in two years, it elevates itself to a grand larceny, which would be bail eligible. That's the first bill. The second bill says if this person goes into a Walgreens or Rite Aid and, and assaults one of the retail workers who are trying to protect either the other workers or the consumer, the customer, then that's an assault that now would be considered a Class D felony, also bail eligible. And the third bill basically says that if discovery, if we can you know, obviously work with the district attorney's office, because a lot of district attorneys, they dismiss cases because they don't have enough time mm. to do the evidence. So if we can extend the discovery time to allow the district attorneys to do the proper investigation, then maybe we can have, obviously, a more robust, more fair, more equitable, but more timely uh, investigation, then that's the third bill. But these are based on complaints that we get from our constituents. So these are the other bills that are out there, and hopefully they move. And again, if you have any opinions, please let me know. Locally, locally, illegal smoke shops. Uh, the thorn in our side, a lot of our complaints to the officers about the illegal smoke shops. If you know of any smoke shop that you want investigated, what I have done is I have earmarked one person on my team, my staff member, his name is Sean McCabe. He actually runs the Middle Village office. He is now my point person to work on this issue full time. So somebody calls the office about an illegal smoke shop, we give it to Sean, Sean then reaches out to the local precinct, the local sheriff's uh, contact that we have, the local law enforcement to get that store investigated. Um, I appreciate the efforts of the NYPD, of New York City sheriffs and other law enforcement to crack down on these legal smoke shops. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I voted no on legalizing marijuana because I didn't think we were right or ready. And we're, look, we're seeing that, that we were not ready. We never thought of this, the illegal smoke shops and uh, law enforcement and everything else that came along with this. And the state is going to realize far less revenue than it would have if they did it right. So the idea here is the illegal smoke shops, and I have one right across the street from my new office in Woodhaven, right on Jamaica Avenue. And I'm standing outside and I'm watching 15 and 16 year olds, definitely minors, walking in and out of this illegal smoke shop. And that bothers me. I have a 16 year old daughter. I think I know what she does. I think she's okay. Right? But the idea is that now the minors are going in there. 
So it's not so much that they're selling illegal products, but now they're dealing with minors. And that's a problem, a secondary problem, a larger problem, in my opinion. So we really want to crack down on the illegal smoke shop. So if you have any that you want to investigate, please let me know. Uh, lastly, and I appreciate your time, just a couple of quick uh, events that we have coming up. Um, this Saturday, April 15th, we have a paper shredding event, um, co-hosting with our good council member, Bob Holden. That's at Atlas Park from 10 to 1 p.m. I believe that's at Alice Park this Saturday, April 15th. On Saturday, April 29th, we have a blood drive, also co-sponsored with uh, uh, Councilmember Holden, also at Atlas Park, that's a blood drive. Uh, that goes from nine to three. On Sunday, April 30th, uh, Forest Park, paper shredding. So it's paper shredding, it's eyeglasses, it's American flag. Thank you, G-Cop, for helping out always. Um, small furniture, clothing, that's again, Sunday, April 30th, 10 to 2 p.m. at Forest Park. The following Sunday, will be electronic waste. Same spot, Forest Park, 10 to 2, same time. Just now it's electronic waste. And that will be the following Sunday, May 7th. And just lastly, um, Sunday, I'm oh, sorry, Friday, May 5th, single day mile. Um, I like job fairs, but I hear from my seniors that they don't like to compete with the 20 and 30 something year olds. So I do a senior only job fair. So 50 and above, we don't proof, it's the honor system. There's no proofing. But a senior-only job fair, Friday, May 5th. Uh, that's at Queens Community House, 8002 Kew Gardens Road, the big black Darth Vader-looking building. Uh, Friday, uh, May 5th, and that goes from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. About 15 vendors uh, or so, and they know they're interviewing uh, seniors. So senior-only. Um, that's about it. I want to thank you very much for your opportunity. Thanks for not snoring. I have thank a you. We have a question for you. Oh, you do? Only easy ones. It's after 8 o'clock. I'm putting you on the spot. You talk about revenue. Yes. Uh, and, and Joe has been the chair of the Racing and Wagering Committee for about 10 years. And when you've spoken about it, you've been waiting to get wagering and, and gambling and betting in, in, uh, in New York State for a while. You felt it would do a lot for the revenue. How much in revenue has, has it gotten for us in the last year? So, um, Let's let's be uh, let's go first. Uh, yes, I like expansion of gaming in a very responsible way. Uh, Walter, the obviously priority will always be addiction. So when we talk about revenue, understand that a portion of which uh, goes to addiction, and it's not addiction bef you know before the, the person gets addicted. It's actually trying to catch them before they lose the house. So it's pre-addiction. Uh, so we address that issue first. But to your point, um, the gaming industry in New York State does about a four billion dollar business every year. That's revenue to the State, but about $3 billion of which or more, 3.5, goes to education. Roughly 85% or so goes to education. So K through 12, uh, education, again, gaming does about $3.5 billion every year to education. So that's the gaming industry in total. The one that really has been highlighted recently is mobile sports betting. Uh, for those of you who are not even interested in mobile sports betting, that's okay, but understand this. We were losing about a billion dollars every year. That's real money, billion dollars every year to Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, because we didn't have it, right. and they did. And New Yorkers were going to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and doing it illegally as well. Now that we have it, we have the number one product in the country. We did about $20 billion worth of handle, which means wages, but that equates to about $850 million for education. So we have the number one mobile sports betting product in the country right now, and through that, $6 million extra for uh, addiction. So that's something else that we okay. always pay attention to addiction. So learn something new every month. Thank you. There you go. That's great. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great night. Always a pleasure. Thank you. We now have committee reports, and we're going to go first with uh, transportation services. Eric. Thank you. Test. All right. Oh, good. Hello, everybody. The Transportation Committee less, last met on March 28th. We, we generally meet the last Tuesday of every month, uh, uh, if you do want to mark that on your calendar. We had a, a guest at the meeting, James Bonner, from the New York and Atlantic Railway. He's the president of the railway. We we're very happy that he was able to come down because, as you heard a bit today during the public forum, there's been ongoing, and as you know from uh, previous public forums, there's been ongoing concerns from many members of the community on excessive rail no noise in Glendale and the Glendale Ridgewood area. Uh, so we invited uh, the president of the railway, James Bonner, to come down and, and speak to us regarding our concerns. And, and we had a very productive conversation. Uh, 
And, and we, we, we do think this will be a start of a, of a chain of conversations to help address these issues. Um, to address a couple of the comments made today in, in public forum, this is something we spoke to him about, and, and that's particularly at the crossing in, in, in part. Um, for the crossing, um, I heard on that recording there were the bells of the crossing. So the bells isn't the, the rail company, it's the barriers when they go down. And there is a regulation where the rail is required to blow the horn leading up to the crossing and then blow the horn straight through the cr crossing. Apparently, according to the railway, there's a, it's all electronic now. It's not controlled by the conductors, it's programmed and it rings in a program manner. I don't have a way to verify this since I'm not driving at the time. If maybe they press an extra button, I don't know. But that's what we were told in committee. What we want to look into as a committee for that to eliminate or reduce noise at that rail crossing is a federal quiet zone. Uh, not sure yet if it's possible. Not sure yet how long that would take. It, it may take quite a while. <coughs> To, to implement such a thing, and that is at a federal level, but it will reduce the noise of the blowing of the horn as trains go into the crossing. And uh, as I mentioned, they currently, under the current situation, must blow the horn throughout the entire crossing, which is quite a large, uh, and there is federal requirements to the, the, the noise level, the decibel level of the horn. Um, so we are on this issue. Uh, the second thing we definitely want to look into, as it turns out, and this is another productive thing that came out of our conversation with the, with the president of the rail company, is, is the number of trains that New York and Atlantic leases from the Long Island Railroad. Uh, there's, there's a handful. And according to this lease deal, at least what was conveyed to us, is that when the LIRR gets the new train cars, the locomotives, the lease holds that New York and Atlantic gets the new train cars. Uh, so as far as train noise and idling, the newer cars, the newer locomotives are much more quiet idling than uh, the old cars. So as far as advoc advocacy points going forward to reduce noise, the quiet zone we will be working on. And as far as advocacy to further reduce noise and pollution, among other things, uh, advocating for the LAWR, double R, procuring the new locomotives that are cleaner, quieter, et cetera, is also advocacy route we're taking. So we definitely hear the concerns of the community, and we continue to fight to, to make this better. Uh, on top of that, the committee continues to hear traffic and pedestrian safety requests. I invite everyone to come to our meetings to hear what we do, see what we discuss. There's quite a few on the agenda. And if you do have every, anything that you know of or any of the community members who are watching this know of, please do email the board office or call the board office and let us know. Because we can't know if there's an issue unless we know about it. So please do let us know and we'll investigate it. Uh, finally, the, the community board office has an ongoing effort to compile a list of streets that need repaving. So if you know of any, please do email the board office. They'll compile that list and then we could forward it to the DOT to get those streets paved and, and nice. So uh, thank you for your time. Our next meeting is April 25th at the Community Board 5 office, 7.30 p.m., and I hope, I hope to see many of you there. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you're telling us the problem that Lou has with the train whistle going off that can't do anything about it? You don't think we can? Well, I, what seems the best thing to do about this would be going forward advocating along with our elected officials on the federal level, so we're looking at Congress, to get a quiet zone implemented in the area. It's a federal regulation, and that would almost, sir, that would almost completely eliminate that whistling noise that he's dealing with. Okay. And that, that seems the, the, because they legally have to do it, that's the only way we could get it done. I mean, it is a safety issue, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Youth, uh, do we have anything for education and youth services? Yeah, Go. Thank you. And a welcome to all the new board members. It's great to have a lot of new faces on board here, and I hope that you will consider joining the Education Committee. We had a meeting on Wednesday, March 29th, where we discussed the collaboration of the Bishwick High School, which is now in IS, has relocated to IS-77. There had been some problems that we were aware of, um, so we called this meeting, and we, I think we got it pretty much cleared up. There seemed to be uh, an unhappy 
staff situation, which is now straightened out. There is a new uh, princi interim acting principal at 77 who seems to have a very good relationship with the principal Garcia from uh, Bushwick High School. So I think anything that was happening there has worked itself out. Um, we also had a discussion and a presentation from the Greater Ridgewood Youth Council and a document we received from Maspid Town Hall. And I promised that I would bring this up. And as long as all the elected officials are here and we're talking about budget, it would be very generous if you could consider youth services in planning your budget. It's very, very important. It make, and the smallest amount of money makes a difference for a child to have after school twice a week they could be going five days a week. And after the pandemic and all the loss of services, I, it's extremely important. They do such a wonderful job. Um, the Greater Ridgewood Youth Council gave us a list. I, I'm in, rather than go through it all, we'll have it sent to everyone. They're in almost every school in our uh, community board with some sort of program. Some programs the parents have to pay for. And you know, you might say, oh, it's only $100 a month. But right now, that's a lot of money for some people to, for care for their kids. So if we can get some money, some budget money from our elected officials to help defray those costs, I think that would be worth this meeting if we could get anything. Um, it's not the capital money that they're looking for. It's the money to support the staffing. They need staffing. And if there's anyone that's interested in working, they're also having staffing problems finding some people. But um, it was a very productive meeting. We'll have the minutes and the notes from both uh, organizations sent to all the board members so that you can get familiar with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a public safety committee's report? I know Mary Ann's away. Okay. You want to read it? Why don't we just put it off to the next we'll month? We'll put it off to next month. Peggy, do you want to talk about the bylaws or no? Or we're going to bring it up and vote on it next month? Okay. Bring it up and vote on it next month. Okay. I still have to type up all the new suggestions that I got to this evening, and then I have to run it past the borough president's uh, council, and then see what he says about it, and then bring it back to the board for consideration. So I don't think it's going to happen until okay. September at least. All right, so the, every community board has slightly different bylaws. Uh, so they're asking us to re redo our bylaws, and it has to do with everything from elections to expulsion of a member and things like that. So thank you for working on that. And I know your committee's strong, Jasmine, you too. Um, and Eric, putting a lot into that committee. Environmental, anything from the environmental committee? No, sanitation, nothing from sanitation. Any other committees that I missed? Yo, parks, how could I forget parks? Steve Fiedler. Yeah, good, pay, yes. Hold on. So we have a few things going on. Uh, Juniper Valley Park now has the new track, the new turf. Uh, a beautiful cover for the sand pit so the kids can't play with the cats peeing it and everything. And what was uh, de Blasio's money? $400,000 for exercise equipment down the backside. Okay. Um, Star Park is moving along very nicely. The uh, phase one is done. Phase two is moving along very nicely. I was there last week. Okay. And uh, one of the other things that I'm going to do this week is with Portia Davenport, the administrator of uh, Highland Park, the invasive species uh, contract has been started. They're removing all the invasive species and planting trees, okay? And she's going to give me a tour and we're going to go down in the basins and check it out. Uh, other than that, uh, we have a committee meeting coming up at Juniper Valley Park. When, Gary? May 2nd. May 2nd at Juniper Valley Park. We probably meet down by the park house in the back. 
and uh, then work our way up through the park. All right? That's great. Uh, any questions, anybody? I understand there's some homeless encampments at the bottom of some of the basins that you'll encounter. Uh, so. They constantly, uh, Joe, Joe, what's his name? Joe Block, mm -hmm. Gary? He's, not there. he's gone. Oh, he's gone? Yeah. Wow, see that? They have a replacement already. They have a replacement already. Yes. Yeah, they got them moving in and out all the time, okay? okay. Yes, Kathy? Are we making any progress on the entrance to the Pacific Ocean Park? Are we making any progress on Jackie Robinson? Yes, we had a meeting up there. Jackie Robinson, uh, the entrance into the back of Forest Park. I don't know if you know that. It's about a year now, two, year and a half done. Okay, and there's a nice circle there, and they had what they call soldiers' fields, and they put benches, all right? Well, people are coming 40 miles an hour and crashing into a berm that they had there, almost went through it. So we had a meeting up there, we met, and uh, they, took the, they took the chairs, they took the benches away, and moved them up the side, and they're going to come in and make a higher berm. We had all safety uh, people there, and they said they couldn't do anything with barricades, jersey barriers, or anything like that because it don't meet the requirements. So Park said, Phil Spraccio, Deputy Chief Operations, said uh, he's going to come in and make a higher berm. And they put reflections there and everything, but it's just a bad design. Sorry to say that, but it's just a bad design. Anything else? Thank you. Frank Principe. All right. One thing, Frank Principe. Paul, you yes, had something? We had, a, we had a scope meeting on the play area, okay, and uh, that's about it. Where are you talking play, about? The Saw Principi, Saw okay. Paul Field, and the, pl uh, the playground. The playground we had the scope yeah. meeting on. The Saw Paul Field, which is not used for just about anything anymore, all right? Soccer. Well, soccer, dog runs, whatever, okay? Well, we're going to try to find out how we could fit that into a, another scope meeting and see what the community wants down there. Thank okay. you. Paul? We have a sanitation committee meeting uh, coming up. And before that, Gary is scheduling a meeting with enforcement and uh, I forget when that is exactly. Next week? We have a sanitation committee meeting next Thursday. The 20th. 20th during the day. We're meeting the new super and uh, get to know him, and we're going to go over enforcement regulations uh, for the area, and that should be good. Great. Uh, so, so if you, if you, your committee, Paul, and the transportation c committee could get together to talk about that 74th Street that Mr. T asked about, you know, maybe for uh, alternate side, you guys, that'd be good. Steve, you have something uh, else? The Steve? one other thing we met when we met on the. Uh, the entrance to Forest Park there. Uh, I had to go up to another meeting on, what is that, the side road of the, uh, the side road of the Jackie Robinson where they park all the trucks? And uh, the gentleman who was at that meeting was at Forest Park's meeting and said, that's moving forward. So um, hopefully within a year, okay, those trucks will not be able to park there anymore. It'll be a bicycle lane, it'll be a sidewalk, and that'll be cleaned up nicely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ted? Ted, you got something? Your committee? All right. Time is now 8.54. There's a committee. Yes, Barbara. Thank you. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Barbara Toscano, and I am the vice chair of the Health and Human Services Committee. And on February 15th, we had a virtual Zoom meeting for the committee, and basically it was an informative session. We had two guest speakers um, bringing health into our neighborhood, into the Queens neighborhood. The first speaker was Claudia Durante. She was from the Meyer Cancer Center, which is an affiliate of the Way Cornell Medicine. And what they do exactly is have cancer prevention through early detection, screening, education, and assisting people to navigate care once they're diagnosed. Um, she, she said that her organization is focused on preventable cancers, and she's focused in Queens on high-priority neighborhoods. There are about eight high-priority neighborhoods, and I was a little astonished to find out that Glendale and Ridgewood are considered high-priority neighborhoods 
in Queens where the risk of uh, being diagnosed with cancer is very high and people die prematurely before age 65 from cancer in these neighborhoods and they think it's due to a lack of access uh, to care. So what this organization offers is free, um, free cancer screening. So what they do is they, they concentrate on four cancers that they feel are preventable, prostate, breast, colorectal, and lung. And for the prostate, they give free PSA tests. For the breast, they give them mammograms, free mammograms. For the colorectal, they give a stool-based kit out free. And for the lung, they do a risk assessment. And they also have smoking cessation services. So their goal is to educate the community, to increase outreach in our Queens community, to build trust, and to have events in the community where they will do all the screening for free, and then also follow up with the tests with the people, what their results are and everything. So you can come to, they could come to a not-for-profit organization or a, um, a festival, and they really want to outreach men. So they were saying things like at sports events or barber shops, they would like to have churches where they can reach men to with these kind of uh, screenings. So it was very informative. The second speaker, her name was Raida Hossein, and she comes from the organization Live On New York, which is an organization that deals with organ donation. And so they were bringing um, outreach about signing up to be an organ donor and about their services. And her, her organization deals with a donation of organs, eye and tissue donation. And they service the five boroughs and also lower Hudson Valley. And what she was telling us, of course, kidney is the number one uh, organ that is in need. And 75% of the people on the waiting list for organs are people of color. So that was very interesting too. And the organization works to educate the community, educate them how to get on an organ transplant list, outreach, they work with hospitals, and they also care for family members of the donors. And they advocate for those waiting for donation. There are 9,000 New Yorkers waiting for donations. 8,000 of them live in the designated service area of Live On New York, which is the five boroughs and the lower Hudson Valley. And what was interesting to find out was one organ donor can save eight lives and improve 75 lives through tissue donation. And Sadly to say, only 45% of New Yorkers are registered organ donors. Uh, how can you become an organ donor quickly? You can, by voting, regist registering to vote, you can you know, get yourself as an organ donor or through the DMV. And um, a doctor must refer a patient to a transplant program. Um, what I found interesting was even if you're not an organ donor and, and something happens to you, you can still sign, your family members can still sign you up to be an organ donor. So if you are not one and something happens, anyone in your family could sign up, could tell them I want my, I want my loved one to be an organ donor. It could be a healthcare proxy, any member of your family or anyone who uh, is involved in the disposition of your body. Mm -hmm. uh, you can only have the donation in a hospital when the patient is declared dead by a doctor and placed on a ventilator prior to the death or have died on a ventilator. And there were a lot of myths about donating organs that they want to dispel. For instance, a doctor won't try to save me if I become an organ donor. And that's not true because a doctor takes a Hippocratic oath and the first thing they have to do is save people. And also the doctors who are caring for you are not the doctors who are doing the organ transplant. And the second one is I'm too old to do it. The oldest person they have who was an organ donor was 95. 
so you're not too old to be one. A lot of people are afraid you can't have a normal funeral, but you can. They're very careful, they're very dignified the way they present the body, and you can have a viewing. And some people feel that you have to pay to be an organ donor, and you don't. And the person who receives a donation, that's pay through insurance. That was basically it. They want to just increase outreach in the community so people can sign up and, and do this kind of um, great service. So um, we discussed future meeting topics such as veterans care at the hospitals we might do a topic on and also mental health. And I have the phone numbers, emails, and also the printout of the PDFs of the PowerPoint presentations if anybody wants them. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Barbara, good work. So it's 9.01 and we're into new and old business. Ted. Hello? Uh, yep. Not on, is it? Hello? Okay, there we go. So um, former Assemblywoman Kathy Nolan allocated $450,000 uh, on behalf of the Myrtle Avenue Business Improvement District from the State DOT to New York City DOT, the Queen's Office. And the purpose is uh, to purchase more M poles, historic M poles, on the side streets of the, of the present Myrtle Avenue bid, which they do not exist right now. The, um, about 20 years plus ago, the first phase was done where M poles were put on Myrtle Avenue proper, and that was funded uh, through, again, Assemblywoman Kathy Nolan, then State Senator Surf Maltese, and at the time, Dennis Gallagher, who was the city council uh, for this area at the time. Um, the funds, uh, let me see. The bid originally submitted a list of about 40 locations to complete the M poles. $450,000 will, will not do it. This is the first phase. And uh, we had a Zoom meeting yesterday with uh, Kathy Nolan, I'm sorry, with uh, Commissioner Garcia, called Queens, and with my colleague from the Myrtle Ave, from the bid in Steinway Street, Marie, who was also using uh, this funds for, um, for more ampoles in her district. Uh, before Kathy left, she had extra multimodal money. She gave $450,000 to the Myrtle Avenue bid, $450,000 to the Steinway Street bid, $450,000 to the Sunnyside bid, and $450,000 to the Long Island City bid, all in her catchment area. So um, what the commissioner is asking is that she needs a letter of support from th this community board that not, we're not an objection to this because the next phase in the next month or so, it's going to go to the Public Design Commission, and they require that. Are they going to come back to us after that, after the design? Are they going to show us the design so we could no, look the, at it or the, no? No, the M poles go down Myrtle Avenue, okay. the same. It, it, it's, it's, just, a, it's a routine pole, right. uh, and of okay. course, the importance of this is it adds to the historical flavor of the community. The bid district cuts through one of the largest federal and state historic districts in the country. Right as well as uh, some New York City landmark districts, and it will just add to the historic flavor of what we all want to do. Is it uh, the whole, the entire $450,000 is used for that project? Just, well, we don't even know how many poles it'll buy, because when DOT does their inspection, let's say corner X, they may have to excavate and, and do more foundation work than in another location. So you need a, a, a letter of no objection from the commun community or support board? Or whoever you want to, you know. Okay. And, and I would like a, someone to make a motion that would authorize Gary and I, we can work on the language. Sure. And, Walter uh, Clayton makes that motion. Anybody second it? I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, are there any objections to that or any questions on that? It's money that came from the assembly. Yes, Dory. Also had funded money towards that because we got some of them in Glendale. He would know how much they were allotted. Right, and that well, was how many years you ago. You guys can talk after that. Any objection to having a letter of support that Ted and Gary do together? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And another note: if you're not doing anything on the 23rd of April, you can come to the Myrtle Avenue Street Fair. There you go. 
All right. Any other new or old business? No? With that, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. So moved, seconded by Walter. Again, the new members, just for five minutes over here, we want to take down your thoughts about committees. Thank you very much.